And welcome back to the Dean Obi Dallas Show. We're live here Friday, December 22nd, third hour. And even the first hour today, it's what just happened. As we look back at the insanity of the week, and this is the last live what just happened of 2023. Really happy to have back Andrew Jones Roy, a social scientist specializing in complexity, stand up comedian, and of course, a circus artist. I'm Dr. PhD holding Dr. Andrew Jones Roy. How are you? Hello, I am great. Uh, glad to be here. Let's bring this year to a miserable end, shall we? Let's bring the miserable <laughs> year to an end. Not let's, let's not yeah, bring the yeah, shit. Let's the have a around. miserable segment. <laughs> let's have a great segment to end a miserable yeah. year. And it really That's was right. miserable. Also back, Tom McCaffrey, comedian, host of the last exit the Brooklyn podcast, off the book book, Born Funny, a chronicle through the rise of alt comedy. Tom, nice to see you. Uh, thanks. Good to be here. Let's uh let's end this miserable year. Um on a good note, I'll try. Nice. There we go. There we the go. And Christopher Titus, known simply as Titus, you've seen him on TV shows, specials, podcasts, his comedy special, Zero Side Effects, is on sale now. He does so much more. We'll talk about it later in the show. Titus, welcome back. Good to see you, brother. Uh, good seeing you, man. Thanks for having me on. And let's let, let, let's end this miserable year. I'm I'm fine with that. Let's let's end it. Let's end it. I wish yeah. I could just talk about the backdrops for all of you, but no one can see the Zoom thing. So it's like working the room as a comic, but no one can see the room because there's so much going on with each of you. But <laughs> I can't. I, I, I really like love call... my visual game for radio. Right. No, this is really people can't see, but it reminds me of comics getting on stage and talking about it. Like, what's this? Oh, yeah. God ham. Like at their Gotham Comedy Club, you're like nine million comics have said that. Stop saying God ham. But like, it's the idea of comics telling jokes about the room and they don't realize they've all heard told them before. But let's talk about something fun. And that I don't know how it'll end up, but it still brought me joy on Tuesday in the middle of the show. Colorado Supreme Court announced that Donald Trump is, quote, disqualified from holding the office of president under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment because he engaged in an insurrection. So this is kind of fun. And just the fun part. Like, what was your let me just go through around the horn here. Andrea, Dr. Jones, Roy, what was your Dr. Jones? We're going to call yeah. you. What was your reaction when you first heard this? Well, I, uh, you know, we're on radio, so people can't see that I just cheered uh, visibly when you said that. And I just want to be clear that I'm cheering for the Colorado Supreme Court ruling, not the insurrection itself, uh, right. lest there be any confusion at the end of this uh, miserable year. I was elated. I my my boyfriend read the news out loud and I thought he was messing with me and trying to like cheer me up because we both like jet lag. We're traveling, whatever. And I was like, oh, Christmas came early. I'm a believer. I'm uh, I, I think I found my faith. I think I found my faith. <laughs> It's interesting that you would think you're, it says a lot about your relationship that you thought your boyfriend would mess with you by telling you good news that yeah. wasn't real. <laughs> like, honey, guess what? You know, like you won the lottery. I'm kidding. This yeah, is my yeah. one. The the meanest thing my mom, my mom did a lot of things that were great, but me, but I, I'll just share this quick thing. So when I was a, a first year associate at a law firm, waiting for the bar results and she calls me, I'm at the law firm and oh. I get a call. So it's your mom. I'm at the law library researching. And she goes, oh, you have a letter from the bar people. And I go, oh, can you read it? She goes, I'm sorry to announce that you have not passed. I go, what? She goes, I'm kidding. And I go, why would you oh, kid? No. Like, what kind of that, and she has no track record of kidding. That was the wow. weird thing. It was so against type. Like, it wasn't my mom, who's like, the mom, funny Don person. Rickles? She's right all of a sudden, like, she's <laughs> being the, the cruel comic. Wow. I'm like, oh, you, oh, you. And she got I'm like, wow, mom, didn't see that coming. So, Tom, what wow. about you? When you heard about the Colorado Supreme Court, what was your... Your visceral well, first of reaction. all, um, I was very impressed. I feel like Colorado is always ahead of the curve on everything. You know, they're you know early on with legalizing weed. Uh, now they're the first ones to jump on this. But uh, I I was definitely like, oh, OK, th this is the 800 thing that they're finally getting on Trump to stop him. This is going to be the one he's finally done. Um, I heard it and I was like, yeah, he's going to Venmo Clarence Thomas and this will be <laughs> Um, you know, I don't I don't get I don't get excited about things stopping him anymore. I just feel, you know, I've kind of given up on that. It's kind of like Gilligan's That's Island with the eighth season. You're like, yeah, they're not getting off the island. <laughs> so this is the human Gilligan's Island. What about you, my friend Titus? Uh, I, I, I agree. I think it's I think uh, the first state to legalize marijuana would obviously be the most honest about all of it. That's how you get when you're high. You just all you have is, is honesty uh, <laughs> and that their Supreme Court is is so has more integrity than our supreme court i mean our, our, our real supreme court i mean the supreme court we have currently is more corrupt than most scorsese movies and so i uh i think uh, the colorado is like it's like the kid in emperor's new clothes just called it out man called it called him out for treason 
tried to end, end democracy. So, you know, I'm glad that we're going to give him another chance. What? Sorry. No, but that's it. So <laughs> do any of you, Andrea, any chance you think the U.S. Supreme Court, that five justices, mm. really you just need two more. We got three, right? So we have three votes. And I'm pretty sure, although I'm not 100% sure, they might all say no. I mean, that's possible. But there is a chance they – is there a chance – let me ask you, Andrea. Yeah. Is there a chance you think two other Supreme Court justices join with the liberals and go like, you got to go. This is just enough. I I am sorry to say I don't think so. And so part of my – I'm taking my wins when I when I can, right? So Colorado, good moment. I don't actually have any belief that Trump is going to be somehow stopped or held accountable for anything ever. So there, there's my holiday miracle uh, evaporated. No, and I mean, I'm trying to think of, you know, like Amy Coney Barrett, Brett Kavanaugh. Are these people going to help us? Are they going to actually save – no, these are not the people – who are going to do it. And uh, I just I just don't see it happening. You know, maybe maybe Colorado can secede and the rest of us can join or we can do something. That's more likely, I think, than them siding with the liberals. Colorado, its own nation. But well, yeah. let me go to you. What is look deep down the Supreme Court justice? Forget Thomas and Alito. Right. They're gone. But Kavanaugh, Gorsuch and Amy Coney Parrott, but especially Gorsuch and Roberts, that's my where I'm looking at them. They get Trump is saying, I'm going to be a dictator. He's not kidding. So if he becomes a dictator, this court is meaningless. There are nine people who wear robes walking around a building like they're, they have no power. They and I wonder if deep down institutional self-preservation, two hmm. of them go, I'm going to take it for the team. I'm going to join with the liberals. You're gone. And that's it. There's no appeal from it. You're done. It's bye bye, Trump. Well, even if even if uh, I mean, look, look come on, uh, um, Thomas's wife was literally a concierge on January 6th. So I think that uh, I think we, we will lose. Uh, Leo. Here's the problem. They can't they can't say states rights on abortion and then say and then say it's, it's then treason is a federal deal to be settled. So I think I, I think they're going to surprise us. And I also think that we know they know that Trump won't back anybody anyway. I mean, look at Giuliani. So I think the best thing to do is bury him. If they say it stays, then he's off Colorado. Then we get other states back up. I, I, I have hope to all you people out there. I have hope. It's 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 meaningless and usually wrong, but I still have it. Oh, that's good. You're optimistic. I, no, I, I think there's an angle list that MAGA hasn't doesn't figure out where the Fox News is. There's a level of self-preservation. I mean, if, if a dictator comes in, the courts mean nothing. There's no checks and balance. Supreme Court rules something. Trump goes, good luck enforcing it. You know, we've had presidents in the past say that decades ago, centuries ago, you could have decades ago, not centuries. You could have that again happen. And who's going to enforce? And they know it. So I wonder if uh, enough of them go, we're going to take it for the team. We we already have protection, bodyguards and all that. Tom, am I being too wishful thinking? Any hope you think here? Um, well, well, I just wanted to say, I just, you know, I've been rejected from jobs before, like for my resume. I've never, I've, imagine someone going to the point of like getting a Supreme Court involved to get you to not <laughs> get a job. Um, <laughs> and you're still like, no, I'm still going to try and get this job. Um, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I'll be here on Monday. I'll be I'll be I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming still, in. I'm applying. I'm still going <laughs> to the office. We're going to move your desk downstairs. Right. Um, <laughs> but I felt like like Roberts and actually I feel like Kavanaugh was like the 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 two that there was the most hope for. Um, but uh, I do think you know if you know if he becomes president again, uh, which I feel like people no one really wants to say that, but you know. It's, it feels a little bit like 2016 again, where mm. people are like, no, no, never. But um, it's going to be interesting. I think he'll kind of play the game a little bit, but it'll be the Supreme Court will be like Roseanne. Um, Roseanne Barr, whatever yeah, her name Roseanne is. Roseanne Barr, which I got to say, her new shit is fucking on point. Have you seen her new her new material? She's, she is color. one bad joke from hosting the Golden Globes just to get press. I mean, because yeah. that's what they do. They just get some anyone to get press. I'm not mocking Joe Coy, who got it this time, but I'm just saying they would have R Ricky Gervais knowing he's going to say outrageous things just to get press for the Golden Globes. So if she says a couple more things, she's Golden Globes next year. Not Maybe you know, she's Trump's running mate, too. Maybe that's their... Uh, I'm Perfect. actually sorry to say it, because that would probably do well. So never it's mind. Over. Reject that yeah. idea. Don't give him uh, any ideas. Yeah. No, that, bad. I love the fact that Republicans are saying this is undem this is undemocratic. So upholding the U.S. Constitution is now undemocratic. This is the world we live in. What I would say undemocratic is the coup and the insurrection, but to them, a court interpreting and upholding the 14th Amendment. And this is so remarkable. We have these Republicans, they call my show and stuff, or email me. The, the people should decide. Okay, well, then we want Obama. 
So mm-hmm. why, why should the 22nd Amendment stand in our way? That's the thing that says you can't be the more than two terms. Why let the, why should a court say Obama can't be on the ballot? I want Obama, Obama, Taylor Swift, 2028 for. Oh, man, I, I would I would give my life <laughs> to make yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, quote me on this. Come after me. Oh, I'll Number give my ten. Yakuza pinky, my Yakuza there pinky, put it off right now for Obama and Taylor Swift. Oh, that, that would be all right. So let's talk about something else that was fun in a way fun. Uh, you know, I don't enjoy the true pain of others, but Rudy Giuliani is right below Trump in terms of <laughs> I, my enjoying it. And yeah. because Rudy Giuliani filed for bankruptcy this week, and he it's because of the judgment of a hundred, but nearly $150 million by the two election wow. board workers, Ruby Freeman and Shane Moss. He's made their lives horrible. And he really did. And, he also owes some lawyers millions of dollars. He owes back taxes to New York and the federal government. So he's a mess. But putting that aside, look at if Giuliani did not slint, like sort of slither up to Trump and hang his star on Trump. The guy just is a millionaire, lives his life as he lost for president, but as America's mayor, so to speak. Normally in Nick's company and normal society, he would have been welcomed. Now, to remind people, he's facing 13 felonies in Georgia on top of this. No money for a lawyer. He could spend his life in prison because he'll probably be convicted. So, Andre Jones, Andre, I, I don't have sympathy for him, but I, it just is a message to every Trump lawyer out there. Like, this could be your destiny. Look, he's the ghost of Christmas future. Like, he'll just show up. Like, it's Rudy Giuliani, the ghost of Christmas future. He's going to show up all three hours. Like, I'm here to make a point past, present, and future. This is what happens to you. First of all, uh, Dean, you need to write that screenplay and we all need to go see it where it's just <laughs> Rudy Giuliani or, or every Broadway hour. Musical. He's just different levels of drunk. Like he's yeah. more and more drunk each hour. Like, yeah. so, I, OK. And more and more. Smith is Tiny Tim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think that. Uh, so, first of all, I uh, left my job in 2023 and uh, I was worried we about money. In tw- and then- wait, we're in 2023. That's you right. say it like yeah, it I left years ago. Like I what? left years. It feels years ago, Dean. It was uh, it was four months ago. I might as well have been an eternity. But I was worried about money, and now what? I'm not because, because I'm doing way better than this guy. Uh, so just because of this, like you're not doing well, but because you don't have to file for yeah. bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm not looking. I don't think you know at, at multiple years in prison, maybe just one or two for for something separate. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that uh, finally seeing people who have tied their wagon to Trump get in trouble is exactly what we need in this country. And I think you, Dean, Titus, you two being unusually hopeful about maybe the Supreme Court justices trying to, uh, you know, guarantee their own futures. Maybe we'll see that happen with other things with Trump. You know, maybe other people who've been... The, we all thought that all of Congress would go against Trump when he was elected in 2016, and uh, no one did. And maybe we just keep waiting long enough, we'll finally see people be held accountable for all their like sniveling and things that they've done with him. Because you're right, he could just be a normal, relatively popular guy living in New York City, but instead he's he's going to be in prison. He's a well, mess. You sound like what yeah. some people said in Germany in the 30s. So I, I just I just heard my optimism is probably unfounded. <laughs> yeah. No, that was. Yeah. Let's cut to the people in 1932 going, how bad could this be? You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. all right. Cue the Christmas no. music. Let's go. All right. all right. He became chancellor in 33, but they saw the writing on the wall in 32. And but Titus, what about when you hear about this Giuliani and Trump not helping him at all? Zero. It says something to me. I yeah, but it's interesting. I'm Ru- Rudy's sad, man. He's become he's he's become Gollum in the worst Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. Uh, look, everything Trump makes dress and drag dies, and I, I just think we need to just have an elderly home for all these people of friends of Trump that have been indicted because of Trump. But I have no sympathy for him, and I think the best journalist America has currently, Sasha Barrett and Cohen, showed us exactly who Rudy Giuliani is, and uh, and you know, man. Listen, we ha- we can't have any sympathy for a guy who crimed this hard, who actually at one point was held up as a hero to America and then used that to become one of the most corrupt individuals. I hope he go. I hope he does more time than Navalny. There you go. <laughs> he just disappears in a prison. Yeah, so, I hope he does. So- Tell Say him, what, what you is, will about you... Rudy Giuliani, but at least he kept his dignity in this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he still has that. He's not bankrupt Role model for our kids. He still has dignity. <laughs> right. Tom, were you in New York on 9-11? I was, yeah. And no, uh, I mean, you know, I, I don't I, I feel like I'm one of those people that, you know, they're always like, you know what, I like this band way before everyone everyone else did. I, you know, I hated Giuliani like before it was cool. I really did hate him. Like because I was around, like I, you know, I grew up in New York and like 
when he was mayor and he was like banning dancing and like bars like police would come into bars and make sure you weren't it was like fucking footloose or something in new york in 1999 <laughs> but um i don't i know that it, it's become kind of like you know hack you know talking about his you know his fall from grace but it is insane i mean like it's almost like a cult. I mean, dare say, I mean, that whenever I see cult documentaries, it's always the exact same playbook. They hitch their wagon, they drag them all the way down, and they just can't quit them. They just can't because they're so... And I'm also, this whole thing with, you know, Ruby Freeman, it's like, imagine being so racist that, like, you just had to keep saying these disparaging things against these people and, like, paying hundreds of millions of dollars for it. It's like, just, just don't say their names anymore. <laughs> he he won't stop. And, you know, his thing about, oh, they're passing around USB ports like it's uh, vials of cocaine and stuff like you're not even out of nowhere. Like, that's what he said during the, the testimony before the Georgia. I think he's I think he's going to be calling them for those vials of heroin these days. Look, I mean, Julian, it's interesting you say that, Giuliani, you were against him. He was unpopular right before 9-11. I mean, he was an unpopular guy he was leaving office. 9-11 happens. And he does step up the right way. I wonder, though, Andrea, Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump both hosted Saturday Night Live. Is there a connection between mm. Saturday Night Live and the downfall <laughs> of America somehow? Is there? If you host, I hope S not because we look if back the, to uh... all the hosts of SNL and go like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean did that's Hitler the thing is that it... no Hitler never. Did hosted I ever SNL. host? Is that what no, you're Hitler. asking me? Hitler never oh, hosted Hitler SNL. Host. If we go back, yeah, Hitler 19, and I co-hosted. Uh, I'm a little bit yeah. older than I look. Yeah. Hitler was the musical I'm, guest on yours. <laughs> yeah. I'm hanging on for Travis Kelsey for the Supreme Court. Uh, so we got to uh, we got to hold on for some of the the hosts to uh, to be redeemable. So, all right. So there's no I, I worked at SNL when I was on the production staff when Trump actually hosted the first time Ooh. and stiff as a board. Horrible. Like he was not a good host in any way. He became a better performer 10 years later when he ran for office. He really did because I went back and watched it. I'm like, wow. He, like a comedian who developed this craft, he's horrible. But now, let's turn, it's what just happened. Andrew Jones, Roy, Tom McCaffrey, and Christopher Titus, known as Titus. So speaking of Trump, Trump quoted Hitler again, um, you know, because that's what he does. Even though he, just to remind people, in October, he first quoted Mein Kampf. And even if he didn't know, there was a backlash. Everyone said all over, he's quoting Hitler. Then he does it again last week. He does it again this week. And his defense is just perfect. I never read Mein Kampf. And he actually said that the line he's talking about, he said, Hitler said it, quote, in a much different way. So I'm like, <laughs> that's on camera. That's the leading Republican candidate for 2024 Republican going, what? I never read Mein Kampf. And the way Hitler said it is much, and he invoked Hitler's name. Now there's video of him saying Mein Kampf, Hitler, and I say Hitler's words in a different way. And I'm like, so, so Titus, let's start with you. Even if he really didn't read Mein Kampf, which is likely, someone else could have put it in the speech. But the point is, I see saying his instincts are just like Hitler's. Like, I didn't know Hitler said that. It's just, we just happen to agree. This is kind of, this is like a different way, but <laughs> our instincts thinking. the same. Like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got I think uh, Trump is the Carlos Mencia of dictators. He's just <laughs> taking stuff. Um, li listen, it, it, that, uh, that article from 1990, I think it's Vanity Fair, where Ivana was talking about, he literally had a book of Hitler's speeches next to his bed. You, we have, and she's buried on his golf course now, so we can't ask her, but, um, right. which is weird, what? Um, but I think we, we have to accept the fact that this man, look, a man this dumb, this uncultured can get this far. There's got to be something, a playbook that he's been following because there is no way. This guy's a moron. He said five words and thought he passed a brain test. So <laughs> it, it, the only way, the only way this man could be where he is is to be study, studying one of the guys who rose. And people forget that Hitler was in jail and they were like, he's done. And then he came back. I think that's what scares me the most about this time. Mm -hmm. People are going, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. He could come back, you know? So uh, I, I think that he's obviously quoting Hitler. He's doing it over. I mean, the man had to look up what the word vermin meant before he said it. So, uh, uh, it, yeah, he's quoting Hitler. I've been calling him Sweet Potato Hitler for six years now. Sweet and Potato Hitler? I never heard yeah, that. So now you've ruined Sweet Potatoes for me, so thanks for that. But uh... <laughs> Happy holidays. Pass the Sweet Potato <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> the, what about, I think it's really interesting, though, because it's not like Trump would have read Mein Kampf, 
But Mein Kampf was written when Hitler was in prison after the Beer Hall Putsch in 1923. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of all ties together. So, Tom, what do you think? Do you think he's channeling Hitler? Do you think Stephen Miller, who probably has read Hitler, who writes some of the speeches, maybe he just put it in there and Trump reads whatever's on the the list. You can say anything, like pick up some eggs and, you know, ham tomorrow. Like he'll just read a laundry list up there. Uh, or what do you think he's getting it? Followers, you know, I want to I want to say like what Hillary Clinton said, they're deplorables, but I mean it in a different way. What do you um, mean? I think, first of all, I when he says he didn't read Mein Kampf, I don't think he did because that involves him reading things. So that's right. But I do think audiobook is definitely possible. That's right. <laughs> who did the voice? Who does the voice of Hitler? That's in the Mein Kampf. I don't know who would read that. Sasha Baron Cohen. Right. Yeah. Stephen Miller. I don't know, Bannon. Um, oh, Bannon, Steve Bannon, perfect, right. Uh, That's what probably Bannon reads tonight on Christmas Eve. That's what he reads to the kids, Mein Kampf. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I, the thing that's most, you know, maddening and frustrating about this is like that, like with this Hitler thing, it's been going on for like, I don't know, it feels like months where he's you know, channeling and quoting Hitler. And it's not like his numbers don't move. <laughs> they go yeah. up. It's not, like the fact that it's not a disqualifier anymore is like, that's insane. Remember... Remember when when I was younger, politics was like boring, and people would be like out of races because like they they yelled. What, what was it? Um, who Howard was Dean. Howard Dean. Howard Dean. Yeah. Howard Dean, like, yeah. Howard, and they were like, "This, this guy's fuming." You should have just quoted Trump. Hitler. Remember Joe Biden when he ran decades ago? He had to drop out because he had plagiarized a speech, and it wasn't from Hitler. It was from like a labor leader <laughs> in the UK. Trump is. Steal a plagiarize from Hitler, and right. all they wanted to him was a Harvard law, college dean who maybe didn't fact check her articles. I'm like, the guy is channeling Hitler. And to and your other point, who, and about fifty percent of people are like, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to give him another chance. So, Andrea, you you know, look, we maybe, all quote Hitler sometimes. Every once in a while, it just slips out, right? Right. right. He doesn't say vermin and poison. He talked about a place. range of topics. It's applicable widely. There's no, uh, yeah. <laughs> but Andrea, let me ask: as a social scientist, what does it mm. say to you that there's a poll, NBC poll, of Republicans in Iowa, forty-two percent said the fact Trump is channeling Hitler and using this language makes them more likely to support him, and twenty-eight percent. Only 28% say less likely. So 42% right. like he went to the source. He's channeling Hitler. I like him even more now. That's literally an right. NBC News Des Moines Register poll that just came out two days ago. My my, I'll, I'll answer your poll with another poll, which is I think there's another poll coming out that says that most people don't even know who Hitler was and are denying the Holocaust and all those other things. So I think if they're, they're like, wow, he's so he's uh, he's he's quoting great leaders from the past. Fine. I don't know anything about what's going on in the world. And so that sounds like uh, uh, good news to me. I think that. Um, What's I don't we don't we don't need to go down this this rabbit hole too far, but I feel like aren't these the same people who are on Israel's side in the Middle East, right? Aren't like all of the Republicans, Republicans pro-Israel, yes. but also pro-Hitler? Like, it's true. Confusing. So uh, I think they just don't know who Hitler was. Maybe they think he was like a, a leader, you know, like a, a, like a Reagan's brother or something. I don't know. So what when they, they hear like neo-Nazis, like, oh, wow, they're the new ones. I like this. Right. right? Yeah. Like they're updated. Yeah. It's sort of like like the new version. It's like an iPhone 6.0 or something like that, where the rest were like, this is I actually wrote an article. I, at some point, you have to call MAGA a not a neo-nazi but a modern day version of a nazi movement if trump's going to continue to quote hitler and they're going to cheer and like him more and he's changed the focus from jews that hitler did to immigrants using the same language how is this not a modern nazi movement and i know that seems over the top but i think at this point we're not over the top when you're literally quoting you're if he stopped quoting after october after the backlash you could mm -hmm. said someone put it in the speech he just read it He's doubling and tripling down. I love the clip. They're going to use it against him. I never read Mein Kampf. Hitler said it differently than I did. So, Titus, what do you think? I mean, is it what do you call MAGA? Fascist? Is it fair to say Nazi? Does it sound too over the top to call it a modern day Nazi movement? Not at all. I mean, it's freaking me out. You, in the Midwest, it feels like the American Reichstag fire is going to happen in an Applebee's in Des Moines. Um, I, 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 I look, look man. on the communists. The Applebee's <laughs> was burned down by the communists, like like we, Hitler said about the Reichstag. We um, listen, man. We we are at a place right now in America where the scariest thing. Look, look people don't know that Ice Ice Baby was literally under pressure by Queen. So how the hell are they going to know? Yeah, beaches. So uh, um, we have to educate more, and I think our journalists. I think journalists, except for you, Dean. 
suck no. right now and nobody is writing this people keep talking about this man as if he's a viable candidate where every day they should just list exactly everything he's done and they don't they keep talking about him you know how do you feel you know trump's coming up in the polls and biden's polls suck and i, I i'm to the point now where i'm so tired of because journalism is not journalism anymore they keep talking about how people feel yeah but why do people feel like that that's not your job and I'm talking people I like, Katie Fang, you know, uh, you know, uh, Stephanie Rule. I'm talking people that I like are acting like Dr. Phil instead of being hard journalists and nailing this dish douchebag to the wall. I, and I think that's where we are in America right now. I, I agree with you 100 percent. And I think the journalists, there were so many headlines like in The New York Times, Washington Post. Banning Trump from the ballot only makes him stronger. I'm like, mm -hmm. what's next? Putting Trump in a prison cell, putting Trump in solitary confinement only makes him stronger. Trump being, <laughs> joining the Orange Brotherhood in the in the prison gang, all, anything makes him stronger. You're making him in, invincible. You're making yeah, him like a deity. It's unbelievable. The yep. inevitability of Trump. They are building this. They should be like this. This should they they have to go after the base at some point and go like. In America, this should be disqualifying. You're quoting Hitler. You're charged with 91 felonies. You engage in insurrection. You attempted a coup. This is unreal. It is surreal. Like you take a step back, it's surreal. Like I can't believe. That's why you, you hear things like Biden. He's not giving you know what his agenda for next term is. It's like the other yeah. guy is quoting Hitler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's it's the same. It's kind of the same. It's just different variations. You know, different degrees. What do you mean, my agenda? I am not Hitler. That is <laughs> I put the, the agenda is I will not quote Mein Kampf at any time. Look, like, but there I, is a I, debate, I, though. I, I'm glad yeah. you touched on it because that, that was the next topic because there was articles that in NBC News, and I just wrote an article for MSNBC literally just before we started that touched on this very point, that there are people who are like, the anti-Hitler, if Trump's a nominee, there's a teeny chance he's not the nominee, teeny, like, 10% chance, I'd say. But if he's a nominee, you can run an anti-Hitler Trump campaign and you're probably going to win. Probably. If it's Nikki Haley or DeSantis, you you need an agenda beyond that. So you got to start thinking about, you got to give people reason to come out to vote for you. Because the recent polls showed 50% of Biden supporters said they're voting for him because they're opposing Trump. Only like 33% said it's for his policies. But Biden's got good stuff to talk about. And also, but he really has not laid out a vision for a second term. You wait, have to lay out a vision. There's no vision. Wait, 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 stop. Heard. This, this is ahead. where I go crazy. This is where I go crazy. Sorry to interrupt, guys. This is where I go nuts. Listen, we got infrastructure. He did it. We we He right. turned it, the pandemic yeah. around. Chips yep. Act. We've got 1.2 million manufacturing jobs, lowest unemployment, the economy, the lowest inflation. I mean, there's the list is endless. It's literally... Yep. FDR is like, I'm a little uh, worried right now. I don't I don't quite understand why we keep, what's, what's his future agenda? He turned the fucking country around. What are we talking about? Like this what, is what bothered me. And, you, and that's when you, jump, when you jump on that bandwagon of like, yeah, he's got to talk about his future agenda. Uh, but, he had, but he had, but saying like making a referendum and what he did, that's fine, right? Presidents get reelected generally. He'll keep like, doing he that. Great job. So he'll do that, right? He'll say that. But there are people, he, no matter what, you have to give people a reason to come out and vote and excite them and animate them. And it's a lot. It's not just younger people who call my show who are like, we want them to. The bigger thing is fight harder. It's not even policy. We want President Biden to get out there and talk to talk about reproductive freedom with more commitment and do stuff. The idea of climate change and fossil fuel, the, uh, the Middle East, that's a big issue now. That'll probably be made moves on all of this. Dean, he's made moves on all of this. They want more. Listen, we are whiny bitches in America. We really are. We <laughs> are if, true. If it's not perfect, if it's, if it's not perfect, all of a sudden, well, yeah, you know what? He only gave $100 billion in student loan relief. That's not enough. I just shut the fuck up. I'm to the point where we had a president that tried to burn the country down. He literally tried to end democracy. We got one guy who's every day done amazing shit. And now we're like, yeah, but you know, I, I want to hear what he, what, what amazing shit is he going to, like Superman saves the world. And they go, yeah, but you know, you spun it backwards a little bit. Now my, my, I like daylight like savings time now. I don't, I don't like it. Like, like you're what's that? A shitty guy. Hi, Tom. What'd you say? They're like, yeah, but your son's kind of a shitty guy. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. What? Well, what's next? Look, and to your point, uh, Titus, that I was going to write an article. I wrote one years ago, but I went back and looked at it more. You know those polls? Is America on the right track or wrong track? Mm. Since 
the 1990s, America's been every poll, doesn't matter who's president, only it averages 25 to 30 percent of Americans saying we're on the right track. There's little spikes, like oddly, right after 9 11, everyone felt good. But if you take that out, I'm not kidding. From the 1990s, didn't matter if Trump, Obama, whoever, you have little spikes up to 45 percent, but the average is 25 to 30 percent of Americans say we're on the right track, and 60 plus percent saying we're always on the right track, the wrong track. And it is right. You're like, I don't know what people want. I mean, look at. George Washington and Valley Forge, they died in the winter. They had they ate each other almost to stay alive. And if you ask them, is America on the right track? Like, damn straight it is on the right track. You know, like the hero. <laughs> this was the people who founded our nation, who gave everything. And we are, we are whiny, uh, entitled people. Where if it's not perfect, it's not on the right track. Why? Eggs are 10 cents more this year. Really? That's why we're not on the right track. That's literally what you have. But we also have the I short- want to meet the people sure. who are in this 25 percent. I assume it's a rotating bunch depending on partisanship. But there's got to be someone in there who's like, I think the last 30 years were fantastic. Like, who is that person? I want to speak to that person. Some of the overly optimistic who sees like yeah. a drop of water in a glass and goes, it's full glass. It's a full glass. Kind of we're drowning in a full. good way. Tom, yeah. where are you, uh, in a good 30 years. Tom, where do you think we're on the right track <laughs> or wrong track? Where's America now? Um, you know, it, it's funny because like I hear all this stuff and I am mad all the time about things, but I feel like my life is pretty good. And I, I buy eggs all the time and they I never really notice anything. It always seems all right, one percent. Let's go. So but that's <laughs> so look at the artwork, Thomas, surrounded by people can't see it at home. Yeah, Tom's coin, egg money, he has a wing is. at MoMA. I He's have a hung- Picasso behind me. And, yes, he you does. Know, He's a self-portrait. Holiday. No, but it, it is funny because I do feel like um I'm unhappy all the time <laughs> and I have everything I like if you as a kid if you had told me all the things I would have now like that I would just have if I could if you had told me as a kid I would just be able to watch anything that existed on a phone at any time I would have been like oh my god life must be like amazing is life just great and it's like I've never been more miserable I have everything that I but I mean I feel like what people miss is like, I feel like life is kind of supposed to be not that fun a lot of the time. Right. But people think it's all supposed to be like, Mm. this is great all the time. But you know, you ever see that twilight zone with the twilight zone where the guy dies and he thinks he's in heaven and he he gives him everything he wants. And then it turns out he's in hell because he gets everything. He's in the painting behind you is what you're saying. (laughs) People can't see. Look, I think it's very interesting about if you lower your expectations enough, things are better, right? Like you're like, Hey, I'm just happy to be indoors. You know, like really low. We have plumbing. Oh my God. Things. um, It's very interesting. I I don't know. Before we take a break, Andrea, do you want to chime in there? Like, is there a way of, Make yourself happy by just saying it's supposed to be bad. So these glimmers of hope are what it's you should bad. latch on to. Well, I think that this goes back to what we were saying about Biden. And I think Titus ha- is right, is that we're expecting like flashy and yelling and all this stuff. But it's like actually he's like slowly making things a tiny bit better. And that's like the best we could all hope for for our own lives or for this country. And and you're right, because we're only looking at memes and TikToks and whatever, which seems like everyone's life is exciting and everything should be punchy and wild but uh i don't know i'm pretty bored most of the time and i i'm grateful right to be bored that's great if i can I, jump for one second sure. we were stacking dead bodies in refrigerator trucks it's better now <laughs> it's better now <laughs> no i agree Tyler makes a great point all right let's take a break we come back we have a lot more to cover including john snyder from the dukes of hazards was the mass singer and also being investigated by the Secret Service, apparently, and uh, a lot more. So let's take a break. Be right back with more of what just happened after this. Ready? And welcome back. Dino Bidala Show. We're live here Friday, December 22nd. It's what just happened with our friends, Andre Jones-Roy, Tom McCaffrey, and Titus. So 80s megastar from Dukes of Hazard, the guy with the Confederate flag on the car, he was on The mass Singer. I didn't know he was in the mass singer. He was in the mass. It turned out just he was revealed this week. And then right after that, he posts on X in response to a quote, something President Biden said. He he wrote, and I'll read it. Mr. President, I believe you are guilty of treason and should be publicly hung. Your son, too. Your response is question mark sincerely, John Snyder. And I'm like, hmm, what a douchebag this guy is. I mean, that's all. It's like him and Ted Nugent should just. Put two go in a room, one come out type of thing. So, Titus, I saw your eyes light up. What do you, what do you think about – and he's on Mass Singer. He well, wins. Like, his career, he should be happy. He was on an NBC show, primetime show. He's going to have a little and, – and this garbage. 
Well, I don't think actors should ever do their own stunts, number one. <laughs> I think he has a constant brain bleed from jumping those Dodge Chargers. But it's hanged, dumbass. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we actually we actually saw uh, Hunter Biden is obviously hung. They, and you, you, they should be hanged is what you said, you moron. Listen, man, we have a... I, here's what I don't get. This is the disconnect. We seem to have the short-term memory of, of dementia-ridden chihuahuas because we've got people, I mean, to, to say, what has Biden done that, okay, it's, I know it's hyperbole, but what has Biden done that would even, they can't even get him on uh, on an impeachment inquiry. They, I don't, John Schneider, that we're even talking about John Schneider now. It's like talking about me. We're both has-beens and it's over. Move on. No, you're not a has-been. You, <laughs> Titus, your best days are ahead of you. John Snyder. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Word. Titus, if, if we can't get Obama to run again, I'm voting for you, just so you know, Thank just you, based man. on this, this segment The alone. worst thing is the picture just, of John Snyder and all the press is when he was I at SiriusXM Studios. I've heard apparently. about you in the 90s. I haven't heard of John Schneider since 1974. I don't. That's valid. Thank you. Th I, you know, I feel a lot better about me now. Thank you, everybody. This was all for you, <laughs> Titus. This was a pep talk. It was an intervention. We're not even taping this. I hope you feel better. This <laughs> won't even air on anything. I, I this was just, just everyone say. send Titus your love. And we just gather around. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, can I just add about John Snyder to show you what a tool he is? Everyone knows he was in Dukes of Hazard and the car that General Lee had the Confederate flag. And a few years ago, he was asked about the Confederate flag. And he said, quote, I've never had an African-American come up to me and have any problem with it whatsoever. He goes, the whole politically correct generation has just gotten way out of hand. So first of all, I don't think too many African-Americans were watching Dukes of Hazard. So, mm -hmm. but to go up to him and go, oh, you're the guy who played the son of the Confederacy. And I used to watch your show and I'm troubled by the Confederate flag that you still defend. Right. And can I just yeah. say um, a racist, stupid redneck who hasn't worked in 30 years, uh, he sounds like a Trump supporter. <laughs> he, he loves Trump. It's a, Andre, anything you want to chime in or any surprises whatsoever? Is he the because should him and Ted Nugent tour? Because Ted Nugent in 2012 to remind people said we need to ride into the battlefields and chop the heads off in November. And he said, if Obama, the next president in November again, I will either be dead or in jail by the time of next year. And I was hoping we got to pick death or jail for Ted Nugent, but <laughs> we didn't get to pick that because that's a, that's the reality show. I'd love to see Obama wins, the America chooses death or jail for Ted Nugent. But it, Secret Service is actually on it. the Colorado ballot. Colorado is putting that on the ballot now for Ted Nugent, which is going to be great. You got to you got to <laughs> death or jail. So <laughs> is this where we are, 80s, to get relevance? I mean, he was if he had not been anywhere, it would not get any press. He literally yeah. was on NBC's The Mass Singer this week. He was Donut. I'm not sure what that's the character he was and means. unveiled. Yeah. And then minutes later, he felt so good about himself. He felt relevant. So he goes on and says, and then he's like, his response to this, he goes, read my post closely. I didn't call for any violence. He goes, you know, <laughs> I believe you should be publicly hung. Like, he wasn't saying, I'm going to do it. He's right. He just right. said it. He just put it out there. He's going to lean on the passive voice. I didn't see that coming. Look, Look Hitler I, didn't say it like that. Hitler didn't <laughs> say it like that. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say it like that. I just want to say that, uh, you know, his PR is working because I grew up, uh, I was born in the 80s. I was very uncultured. I didn't know who the fuck this guy was. And now I'm thinking about him and I'm talking about him. So it worked. So I'm sorry to say uh, he he <laughs> has become relevant to me. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't like him very much, but uh, but now he's on the, on my radar in a way that even his masked singer victory could not get him there. So well, uh, next on the mass singer, well, we're going to have Rudy Giuliani. You'll have right. Steve Bannon, you know, Stephen Miller, Miller, all of them. I mean, all the people indicted, maybe Mark Meadows, he's doing nothing to get relevant. Again, Mark Meadows, like where's Mark Meadows? Oh, he's donut too on mass singer. And like, Oh, I didn't even know he could sing. He can't, but it makes our stupid show relevant. Oh, it's over. America's done. Titus. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm not yeah, lying. Yeah. But this is if John Schneider. If they brought John Schneider in to make the show relevant, we've really, really, we yeah. really lost our way. The other thing I hate is like these guys, they, they could just go away into the sunset and their legacies will be, we would remember them as these things that we all love, like John, you know, the Dukes of Hazard, Giuliani, but it's like, no, they have to come back and be fucking crazy. It's like, just go away, John Schneider. Just go be Bo or Luke Duke for, you know, we'll have that in our in our minds. Is Luke, it all just Tom social media? Is that too basic? I just feel like that's how we got to learn what's underneath all these celebrities. And it's like, oh, they're not the characters that we all knew and were amazing. They're all just idiots like everyone else that we know. Oh, like, is, that, is that just what happened? I had no access to fucking, you yeah. know, 
the hazard actors. Well, Tom Wopat, who played Luke, has actually been pretty reasonable about stuff over time and saying about the Confederate, because I was just reading an article before he came on. He was saying about the Confederate flag. Look, times change. You know, at the time it was fine. And now I understand the sensibilities have changed. So you've got the two. So one is, so Tom Wopat should be running. We should get him as a Democrat to run for something. Yeah. So, <laughs> chairman, our friends, Tom McCaffrey, Titus, and Dr. Jones, Roy. Um, I just want to say Dr. Jones. I know you say the Roy with such disappointment. Uh, I know because I just want you to be Dr. Jones. Family. I want you to be because yeah. I just I saw the original because on cable all the time. Yeah. Dr. Jones lost again. I've beaten you again. And he takes the um, so, in any event. All right, let's see. Bradley Cooper or Aquaman, King of Puns, all the reviews. What do you guys you guys pick? What do you prefer? Uh, Aqu- we gotta, we gotta Aquaman, go. let's go. Uh, Aquaman, yeah. all right. So the new Aquaman sequels out, and the review titles are just as bad as you think. Because it's all puns by people who have never been funny in their lives. It's CNN, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom sinks under the weight of waterlogged sequel. Another is in Looper, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, soggy sequel that sings without a trace, seeks without a trace. A lot of them are like drown. And I'm like, you have to stop. No one editing. What is going on? <laughs> Titus, are there better puns? Can't you? I got, I got, I got one. Go ahead. Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom needs to buy a ticket on a carbon fiber submarine and go visit the Titanic because this movie Let's needs go. to sleep with the fishes. Wow. There we go. That that's is actually that's a, that. a little you. cruelty in there. I like that. Uh, but, Tom? Uh, I have a good one. Aquaman sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like a dead fish? You're not going to throw in anything? No, no, he how about sucks this? like a person. Amber, let's just say Amber Heard really shit the bed on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman sucks like a person gassing for the last breath before they go down the third time in an ocean. Something because that's what they would add. They would always add something. They why is it, Andrew? Do they think it's clever to do these terrible yeah. puns? I, I'm not better than it, but I've learned right. that you can't. It's got to be really good. Like Titus I, did a good I one because there's a meanness to it that I liked. There, there's <laughs> a welcome. meanness to it. There's a lack of imagination. I, weren't we doing the same thing with like Water World? Anytime you do a water based movie. It better be good because then we're going to have to suffer through all these puns is what we're going to have to do. But uh, but here's what here's what I want to add, Dean, is I just got back from India, which you can tell from how how worldly and cultured uh, and Zen that I am. Right. And Aquaman was playing there, too. And there were signs all over the place. And I didn't see a single water based pun when I was over there. So India is 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 our great hope for society. I, was I, the signs in English or Sanskrit? No, but I'm you. sure they were not water based. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it was yeah. fine. There's a picture of Aquaman. Okay, very good. Okay, so last yeah. thing, it's the holidays. It's the last live show of the year. The for any of you do any anybody watch holiday movies? Are there any holiday classics? Whatever. Tom is nodding your head. Tom, what's a holiday classic for you? All right, I, all right. So I just you know I just, not to brag. I just got back from Hawaii. You know, so here we go. Wow. Anything. Um, nice. uh, I just watched the movie Christmas Vacation on the plane. I'd never watched it. And, you know, that um, has become like a staple now of the Christmas season. I thought it was pretty, I thought it was pretty good. I would, you know, the the one that has become one of my favorites is uh, Home Alone, which I didn't like that much when it came out, but I love that. It's a Christmas movie. And I swear this is a Christmas movie and I love it. Gremlins. I agree. Gremlins, I, seen. I don't know why Home Alone's a Christmas movie. I just had this discussion yesterday with Aaron, my producer. I'm like, it's a story about a family who didn't like their kids so much. They left them alone and went to Paris without him. And then the guy had to fight criminals because the parents didn't care. It's a yeah, it's I'm a so sad bad. movie. Like, how I'm is so it? Bad. They're like, oh, it's Christmas gets time. the cheese pizza, Dean. There's that Weapon, whole part. Weapons are Christmas movie because it was around Christmas time. It wasn't a Christmas movie. But and that's then, what a kid was for me in the 80s. Was like you, it was like you kind of had to fend for yourself. You know, like, and that was a Joe Pesci's coming to your house. Home Alone, Gen Z would never have survived Home Alone. Why you can't? Every I love that every review now, like Love Actually, through twenty years later lens, like this was sexist. I'm like twenty years ago, no one had a problem with this movie. Like things of I get it, but why keep writing the same article? In any event, is there any holiday classic that you enjoy actually? Well, first of all, I was raised by a manic depressive schizophrenic uh, alcoholic who shot and killed her third husband. So Home Alone to me was a romp. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Home Alone 1 and 2 are great. By the way, here's why they're the funniest movies. Daniel Stern is so funny in them. There's a laugh he does in both movies that I might watch. My wife and I both watched both of them in the last two days. We've watched Home Alone 1 and 2. And they haven't cut Donald Trump out, which come on, man. Uh, and they are they are laugh out loud funny. Three Stooges funny. I am in an argument with my wife right now that may end our marriage. That Willy Wonka is in the Chocolate Factory, the original one, is a Christmas movie, and I mm. I'm I'm gonna die on that hill. I think. Which side are you on? 
Yeah, I'm. I think it's a Christmas movie, 100. percent Wrong. I'm I sorry. Mean, no. Gonna, yeah, no. You can look there. A lot of the Oompa are, the Oompa oh. are elves. It's going to be fine. There are a lot of dating like, options. No, no, no. You need no, somebody I, else. Your wife I'm, deserves I'm, someone better. I'm not coming on the show again. I am not coming on the show. Your, your again. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what about you? Is there any <laughs> Halloween right. movie that you like? You know, Dean, I'm glad you brought up Love Actually because I really liked Love Actually when it first came out 20 years ago. I was like 20 and I was like, this is amazing. And then uh, I found out, you know, yeah, five years ago that apparently I'm horribly sexist and I like to oppress women because uh, because I liked that movie. But I did also I watched Home Alone 2 last year. And uh, now that I live in New York, I have to say they did not go to very many interesting places in New York. It's a whole city and they end up in this like abandoned home. Like get your suburban mindset out of out of your ass. I, I really was disappointed. You should have been uh There's only one climbing skyscrapers or something. Park. There's only one yeah. homeless. There's one <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no. And the birds. Oh, you guys, I want to I want to thank She fine. Yeah. She, I don't I have to go watch it again. I Home Alone 1 I've watched a lot of times. Home Alone 2 maybe once or twice. Maybe I'll watch it. I'll give it a second shot. You guys, thank you so much. Happy holidays. Let let people before we go, where can people follow you and, and any work you want to let them know? Dr. Jones, where can people go see your stuff? <laughs> uh, you can find me online at Jonesroy, J-O-N-E-S-R-O-O-Y. Uh, and I'm releasing uh, a brand new data science course on YouTube in the new year. So, so wow, come great. hang out with me. We're going to do statistics. It's going to be really fun. It is going to be fun, but it that is. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, Dean's like, oh, okay, you? never mind. Yeah. Tom? Uh, I uh, I have a podcast called Le2B where I talk about pop culture and uh, movies a lot because I'm a movie uh, addict and um, I'm not on the X thing anymore. I think they kicked me off and um, nice. I'm on Instagram Tom McCaffrey seven two two. I just put up pictures that try to make me look like my life is going well. Um, Great. And With I that a background, you are yeah. you're killing it. Yeah, Titus, what about you? Uh, I'm going to be touring with Carrie and Monsters. We're going to film my next special, my 10th special coming up in uh, February. I'll be in Boston at the Wilbur. Um, I just want to sell. That's the one I want to sell. So go to that one. Uh, also go to Christopher Titus TV to get all my specials. And you can follow me on threads and Instagram. And the Armageddon update, as always, is on is my podcast. So, uh, and Dean, Dean, hey, thanks for having me on this year, man. I've really had a blast. Sure. I, mean, I appreciate all of you. All three of you have been on. Andrea Jones Roy have been on the most, but all three of you have been on. And I really appreciate you guys. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I wish you the best for 2024. I look forward to chat with you in 2024 about the issues of the coming weeks.